Welcome back to Hack Code. In this video, we are going to tackle the liquid problem, palindrome Palm substrings. We will explore three approaches, starting from the brute force, progressing to dynamic program solution, and concluding with an optimized approach using the expand around center technique. By the end of this video, we will master how to count all palindrome substrings efficiently. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. So what is the problem statement? Given a string S, return the number of palindrome substrings in it. So what is a palindrome? A string is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as frontward. So what is a substring? A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. So basically they're given all the ex definitions as well here. So here uh, we just need to return the count of palindrome. So let's say we got a string A, B, C, D. Then what all substrings are possible? So firstly, we have the substrings of length one possible. So what are the length one possible? A, B, C, D. So each character itself is a substring of the string. And then we have substrings of length two, which is A, B. So these two part. And then next is B, C. Next is what? C, D. And nextly, we have substrings of length three. So we have A, B, C in order and then B, C, D. Next, we have substring of length four, which is A, B, C, D. So here, the main takeaway is each character is a substring and then the string itself is a substring. So these are of length 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So this is just a substring uh, given in order. These are the substring starting with A and the substring starting with B and then with C and then with D. Okay. So it's just a simple thing. So what is a palindrome? You might be knowing, right? So palindrome is basically uh, something which reads same frontward and backward. If we have CBC, it reads frontward and backward. So if you read from frontward, it is CBC. And if you read from backward as well, it is CBC. So this is a palindrome string. So the question asks us to return the number of palindrome substring within the string. So firstly, what we need to do, we just need to get the palindromes and then just count it. This is the overall solution in a brief. And then let's look into the examples. So firstly, we got A, B, C. So here the output is three because uh, only three palindrome strings are possible. A, B, C. That's why output is three. So an example two, we got S is equal to A, A, A. So, so we just discussed it. How do we form the substrings here? For A, A, A. So firstly, we go with the length one, A, A, A. And then length two, which is A, A. And next is A, A as well. And length three, we have A, A, A. So here, every substring is a palindrome, right? So this is the palindrome, this is the palindrome, and this is the palindrome. So how many we have? Totally six. So that's why the output is six. So six palindrome substrings are possible. That's why we written six. So what are constants here? So firstly, we have length of the string lying in the inclusion of one to thousand. So what should we learn from this? So basically, we can perform 10 power 8 operations per second. So here, n is equals to what? Thousand. This is the maximum value the n can go. So if we perform n operations, it is 1000 operations per second. So if we perform n square, it is how much? 10 power 6. And similarly, n cube is what? 10 power 9. So what we discussed is 10 power 8 operations are possible per second. So our solution should not reach beyond n square complexity. So this is the boilerplate code given wherein we have a method count substrings which takes the string and returns the end. So integer is what here? The total count of the substrings within the string. Okay. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for pearls. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the completion. Operation brute force. So what is the intuition here? In this approach, we'll consider every possible substring and check whether it's a palindrome. Each time we find a palindrome, we increment our count. So basically, it's just a translating our problem statement into solution. So here, we just need to check each substring is a palindrome and then we just increment our count. So we just return the count at the end. So what is the algorithm here? Use a helper function to check if a substring is a palindrome. Obviously, this is what we require to uh, find if it's a palindrome or not. And then we look through all possible substrings. So because we just need to iterate over the all substrings, right? that's the step here. And step three for each substring, use a helper function to check if it's a palindrome and increment the count. So simple, right? This is the intuition translated to algorithm. And now we see how we translate this algorithm into our code. So firstly, we define the helper function. This is the function we written using our utilities we have for the string. So here we just written a string is equals to string sliced in a reverse way. So here minus one reverses the string and then it gives a fresh string. So here it forms a new copy of string. So here is just like a, a string starting from the frontward is uh, same as a backward. So uh, we just check for the equality and this would return true or false based on the equality. Okay. So this is the uh, one way of doing it, but this is not the optimal way because this forms another string each time you check this. And then if you check for the all the substrings we have, it would be what how many substrings we have n into n plus one by two. 
so here that many times we just create a new string so that's not optimal right if you got a doubt about why i said n to n plus 1 by 2 here we had right how many length like it's four substrings and then here we have what three so it is seven till now and then it is nine so it is one so ten so n into n plus 1 by 2 is what here n is 4 4 into 5 by 2 so that is what we have 10 so that's why i said n into n plus 1 by 2 so we'll be having n into n plus 1 by 2 substrings for a given string okay so that's why this is not optimal because each time it should get a new string so here even though if it is calculated with the garbage calculator but it is not optimal solution okay that's why we have to go this pointers approach so here uh, we have defined the two pointers left and right which is instead of extremes of the string which is the first valid index and the last valid index okay and then we just checking for uh, till left less than right so why left less than right here because we don't need to check for the overlap case right so we just need to check until left less than right till left less than right we check if it's left not equal to right if it is a case then it is not a palindrome we just return straight away here right and false so if this condition is not satisfied it means that this is a palindrome till this step so we just uh, increment our left pointer and decrement our right pointer because we just have to make this pointer string towards each other right so that's why we incrementing the left pointer and then we decrementing the right pointer so at the end uh, if you don't return false here that means that it is a palindrome that's why we return true okay so this is a simple check for palindrome we have what is step two so here we have to iterate to all possible substrings require two loops right so why i'm saying two loops here because if let's see here a b c d so for this 0 1 2 is the uh, indexes we have so for this substrings are a a b a b c b b c and the next is c next is a b c so for finding all the substrings we need two pointers we just need to keep hold of these two references any time so for length one it is just like two pointers are same so that is i is equals to j case so that's why we using two loops here for i in range length of s that means that till uh, length of s means like it would create an index till l minus one because this is an exclusive range and then for j in range from i to length of s so why we consider i because i could be equal to j for length is equals to one substring that's why so and then we checking if it's a palindrome so we have to check right if it's a palindrome or substring so that's why we considering s of i till j plus one why j plus one here because this is exclusive range that's why we have to pass till j plus one to have our j included in our palindromic check okay so if this is a palindrome we have to increment our count we have instance account here right we just increment the same here so and then we repeat this for all substrings at the end we just hit in the count so simple right so let's look at the complexes here the time complex is w of n cube because we're checking all the substrings and verifying each palindrome here in the outer loop n and then here in the inner loop n so here also we're doing for n times right because uh, for a substring of length n we have to iterate till what n times so that's why it's n into n into n so that is n cube so time complex is n cube space complex is of one no extra space except for the result so here we're not using the any data structure that is growing with the size of the input that's why it's of one it's a constant space okay so I got the code ready here and then here we are using is palindrome function not the is palindrome underscore okay let me try running this so this is accept solution for the two test cases and here length of the string is small so let's try submitting this we will be finding this a time limit exceeded because this won't scale for the largest string length so here we see that time limit exceeded so that means that our solution is not scalable for a larger string length so that's why we have to optimize this so let's look into the approach expand on the center so what is the intuition here? This approach builds upon the observation that a palindrome mirrors around the center. For every character in the string, we we'll try to expand around it to find palindromes. This covers both odd length and even length palindromes. So the idea is simple, right? So previous approach, what we did, guys, you remember, right? We just discussed like left and right pointers. Left is initialized to 0 and right is to n minus 1. So for the string length 5, then left would be 0, right would be what? 4. So here uh, we were checking from this edges, right? So instead of checking from edges, we can also check from centers. So here for the center of the string, it is B, right? So how about checking from the center? So then our left and right pointer would be initialized to the center. Left and right would be what here in this case? 2 and right is equals to 2. So we just check if it is left character is equals to right character, right? So now we are checking B is equals to B. It is true. And the next iteration, what we would do? We decrement this left and left become 1 and increment this right. That is 3. So we check if these two characters are matching. So this matching. So that's what we do. We just incrementally check, right? So now uh, what we have to do? We have to decrement our left. Left would be now 0 and right would be what? 4. Now also left and right character matches. So till this point, it is a palindrome. So this is the simple approach of saying that it's a palindrome, right? We Instead of computing this whole string length again, we were checking it on the fly, right? We just checked for the smaller substring B 
and then for a larger substring ABA. So in this case, we are just checking these two edges, right? Rather than checking whole ABA, that means we are saving up on time and computations. So that's the idea here, guys. And another catch is here, we can't have the same centers for even and odd length palindromes, okay? So for even length palindrome, each character in the string can be a center because even length minimum length is what? One. The length one string itself can be a palindrome. So 0, 0 can be a center for that. If, so similarly, for a length of string 5, we have all these centers 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Okay, so here the generic formula is ii because both are same. So ii is the generic formula. So for even length, so even length starts from what? Length 2. So for a string of length 2, how many centers you could be having? Only one center, right? So that case, like we would be having one less center than the length of the string. That is n minus 1 centers for even palindrome. So what are the centers? If you take this even length of CA, then centers are what? 0, 1. And similarly, if you take a string of length 5, we have all the centers 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. So these are all the centers possible. So the generic formula becomes what? I, I plus 1. So basically, we have to expand on the centers and find if the given string is a palindrome. Okay. So totally, how many centers will be having here? n plus n minus 1, which is 2n minus 1 centers we are having. Okay. I just gave it for an idea because this would help us in calculating the time complexity in later part. Okay. So let's look into algorithm here. So firstly, we have to use a helper function to expand around the center and count the palindrome. So if you see in the previous approach, this method was only saying it's a palindrome or not. But our new method would say it is a palindrome and it also return a count, right? So that's the difference. Step two, expand around each character for both odd length and even length palindromes, okay? Because we have two different length palindromes, right? That's why we have to expand around the centers for both odd length and even length. And step three, Increment the count whenever a valid palindrome is found. Okay, basically this is the same thing but doing in a different fashion. Expanding from centers than checking from the corners. Okay, so we discussed all this idea, right? So now let's look into the code. So basically, uh, firstly we have this helper function expand around the center defined. And it takes two parameters, left and right. So here left and right is what the center, right? So we discussed for odd the center would be what i comma i. For even the center would be what i comma i plus 1, right? So we just pass this and then uh, firstly we insert the count is equal to 0 and we are checking if left greater than equal to 0 because like we can't decrement it until like it is go beyond 0, right? The valid index ranges from 0 to n minus 1. So left should be greater than equal to 0 and right should be less than the length of the string. That's all the conditions. So that's what we have it here, okay? Left is greater than or equal to 0 and right less than length. And then what condition we have to check? To check if it is a palindrome or not, we have to check if the both characters matching, right? So that's why we're checking S of left is equal to S of right. Then only we continue the loop. Or else we don't need to continue the loop also, right? We just need to check for the palindromes. If it is not a palindrome, we can break it here only. We're not checking further. So if this whole condition matches, it means that it's a palindrome. That's why we're incrementing the count here. And then we're preparing for the next iteration. For the next iteration, we just discussed here, right? We have to decrement the left and increment the right in order to expand around the centers, okay? So once this loop is done, we just return the count. So now we're done with our helper function. Now let's look into the remaining code. So here, we just initialize our count is goes to zero. Now here, we are iterating the range of zero to n minus one. So basically this is exclusion, right? So that's why we are iterating the range of zero to n minus one. So the index would be formed for what? Zero to four if we take a length of string five. Okay. So in this iteration, we have to expand for both odd length and even length palindromes. So for odd length palindromes, each i can be an index we just discussed here, right? So we pass i comma i. These are all the indexes possible for a length five string. So we pass i comma i here for odd length. And this would return as the count. That's why we're doing count plus is equal to expand on the center i comma i, okay? So basically we're adding the count or count variable here. So next is we have to expand for the even and palindrome. We just discussed it, the centers are what? i comma i plus one here. Okay, so that's why we pass i comma i plus one. And then this method would execute and return the count of the palindromes. That's why we're just adding the count to this count. So at the end, we just return the count. So simple, right? We just expand from the centers instead of checking from the edges. So what are complexes here? The time complex is of n square. For each character, we expand outward to find palindromes. So you got the idea, right? So outer loop runs for n times. And inner loop, we are checking for 2n minus 1 centers. That is n into 2n minus 1. That is 2n square minus n. This factor is negligible and 2 also negligible. That is n square now. Okay. So here we just discussed, right? This point of time, we just discussed n plus n minus 1. It is 2n minus 1. That's how number of centers we have. So that's the idea we are using it here. And the space complex is O of 1. We just only use a few variables for counting the results. So basically, uh, we don't use any variable that goes with the size of the string. So that's why it's always a constant space and it is O of 1. Okay. 
So I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. So this is accept solution for these two cases. Let me try submitting this. So yeah, this accept solution for all the test cases we have. So let's look into another optimized approach, dynamic programming. Don't be scared by looking at what dynamic programming is. Very simple. I'll explain very clearly. So sit back and relax. So first we will create a 2D DB table where DB of IJ will be true if the substring is a palindrome. So here our DP of IJ is a state mission like that. So the state mission stores the state of the substring if it's a palindrome or not. So here we're filling with true or even rather we can fill it as one. So we can fill it as two comma false or one comma zero. Basically we have to say that it is a palindrome or not for a given IJ indexes. So here 2D array is required because so we have to store the state for this like zero to three or one to two. For that we should be having this lookup, right? So for easy lookup, the two dimensional array would be a great fit. So that's why we're using the two dimensional array. Okay. And how does this method help us in optimizing? So basically, uh, if we solve for a substring BB and check it is a palindrome, we can reuse this while computing for the string C, B, B, C, right? That means that instead of computing again BB, we're just looking it up in our DP table and then saying that uh, it is a palindrome whole string. So he, here we can just compare these two characters and then we can check if the substring of one, two is a palindrome or not. So if it is a palindrome, we would be have this stored in our DP table. We will just look it up and then we can just say that it is a palindrome. So here we are comparing only these two characters and looking up from our DP table. So this is saving us a lot of time. So let's imagine for a larger substring, then it would save us a lot of time. So that's why it is an optimal solution. So basically here, we are not computing the subproblems again and again. Rather, we store the results of the subproblems and use it for the bigger problems. That is the dynamic programming paradigm. So, firstly, our aim is to fill this DP array. So, each cell in this represent for the particular given substring, it's a palindrome or not. If you look into the string here, so what are the substrings possible? So, let's list out all the substrings first. So, firstly, we have C, B, P, C. So, this is the single length substring. And then, what are the two length substrings possible? C, B. BB and what we have BC. So what are the three length substrings possible? CBB and then BBC. Next four length substring is what? CBBC. So basically here we can see that each substring itself is a palindrome for given length one. So this is of length one. So for length one, every substring is a palindrome. So we can fill one, one, one for the length one. So that means that we can say like DP of II is one for a single length palindrome. So let's fill that. So DP of II means was it's a diagonal line, right? So one, 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 one. This represents our single length palindromes, okay? So now let's fill for the length two. This is of length two, okay? So for length two, we have to compare what? Zero one here. So here zero one is not a palindrome, right? These two characters doesn't match. So we have to fill the array as zero. So DP of zero one is zero. And next we have one, two, right? BB here. This is palindrome. That's why we have to fill this as one. So now what we fill DP of I and I plus one as one. If we compare like I is equals to one, then uh, two is what? I plus one, right? So that's why we have it. So the formula is for two length string. It is DP of I, I plus one is equals to one. If both characters match, that is S of I is equals to S of I plus one. Okay, if these two characters match, then we have to fill this as one. That's what we have done here. So similarly, what we have next is two, three. This two, three is not a palindrome, right? We just checked it. That's why we have to fill DP of two, three as zero. Next step we have is three length palindrome. So for three length palindrome, what we check, we just check these two characters and then we can just look up for this middle character, right? So for these two characters, which I can, it is not a match. So that's why we can fill DP of zero to two as what? It is a zero. It's not a palindrome. Next we have B, B, C. So here we check B and C are matching or not. So here these two are not matched. So that's why we have to fill this as zero. So we are done with length three as well. Now with length four, what we have to do, we have to just check these two characters are matching. So we can just check for this substring. Substring is of length what? One to two. Okay, so we have to look up for substring of 1 to 2 and then we have to say is the whole string is a palindrome or not. So 1 to 2 what we have DP of 1 to 2. So this thing right this is 1. So we have the external characters matching and also inner substring is a palindrome. That's why it is a 1. So if this cell is 1 we can try to say that the given string is a palindrome. Okay. And here what is the formula for length greater than or equal to 3. We have to check S of i is equal to S of j. 
so if this is true and under check is what we have to check for the internal substring so internal substring we just check for what this like dp of 1 2 2 for length of 0 to 3 so that means that like uh, for filling dp of 0 to 3 what we checked we checked for what dp of 1 to 2 so if you take this as i and this is a j so what this is dp of i plus 1 and this is of j minus 1 so for this length 3 we have to check if d uh, s of i is equal to s of j and dp of i plus 1 j minus 1 this is true or 1 then it means that the inner substring is a palindrome so this is the formula we have so now let's look into algorithm you got all the formulas right step one here is each single character as a palindrome so initialize the diagonal dp of ij is equal to true this we know we just did and then step two check for the two character palindromes that is dp of i i plus one so this also we done here step three for longer substrings check if outer characters match and the inner substring is a palindrome this is the same thing we just discussed so we're just checking these two characters match and this is the inner substring is palindrome or not by uh, looking into the dp right so that's what this step covers in step four we had to count the palindromes found in each step okay this is already be something we discussed but i just gave it in a iterative format okay so guys let's look into the code now the code is just like filling the dp table and getting the count of the substrings we have so here we discuss this formulas right we will be using this in our code okay so for length one substring is just like filling this table on the diagonal and then for length two we check if these two uh, characters match that is s of i is equal to s of i plus one if this is the case we just fill dp of i i plus one is equal to one in our code we will be using booleans that's why we fill true and for length greater than or equal to three we check if the edge characters matching that is i is equal to j and then we look up for the substring using the dp of i plus one and j minus one okay so if this is the case then it is a palindrome then we have to increment our count so this is the same thing in code so basically we got the length of the string here uh, and stored in n and next we are initializing our dp array of n cross n so here all cells are filled to false this is just a list comprehension way in python of defining a 2d array next is we initialize the count to zero this is to hold our palindrome substrings count so this is for our length one palindromes so we discussed it we just need to fill the diagonal for this that's why we're doing dp of i is equal to true and incrementing the count since these are palindromes also here i is in the enclosure range of 0 to n minus 1 okay next is our length to palindromes so we discussed the formula right this is the same formula we are applying here here i is in the range of 0 to n minus 2 why because we are accessing i plus 1 here so if we go till like n minus 1 range it would be index out of bone that's why you're going till only n minus 2 okay so this is the example for string of length 5 the normal indexes range are like 0 to n minus 1 which is 0 to 4 and then if you go for n minus 2 index that would be only 0 to 3 so if we access i plus 1 that is a fourth index so still it's a wired index that's why we're going with only till n minus 2 okay and in step 3 we're checking for the parallels of length 3 this is the formula we discussed right so basically here we're iterating over the length from 3 to n plus 1 that means that we have n is in the enclosure range okay and next here we using another loop within this one why because we need to get i for given length right this i is the starting point of our substring and j is the ending point of our substring so i is valid till what n minus length and then we included plus one because we have to include till n minus length and this is the exclusion range right that's why we doing plus one to have n minus length included in our range so from i we can get j using i plus length minus one why length minus one because length is always one greater than our index right so we're just forming it in terms of index that's why we're doing minus one here so if you take an example here so this is of string length five and here l is equal to three to five okay so basically we are iterating till three to five substrings now what is the i for length three it is five minus three so for length three the maximum value for i is two and now how can we get j out of it so j is equal to i plus l minus one which is two plus three minus one that is four so that means that looking the substring from 2 to 4 okay that means like we have three characters on our substring that means that we are getting only a lengthy substring so you got the idea right so basically we get the j using the i and length okay and now we are checking if s of i is equal to s of j so if this is true we check if inner substring is a palindrome using this one this is just like db lookup we have right so if this both conditions are true then we fill db of i j is equal to true also we increment the count because this is a palindrome okay so after completing all these iterations we just return the count okay this count is a count of our palindrome substance okay what are complexes here the time complex is o of n square so here if you see we are treating our n range and it is n range here so n plus n 
and then here also we have two for loops that means like n into n okay so here we have two n's that is 2n and then plus n square so this 2n is negligible imprint of n square that's why we get n square and the space complex is of n square because we are forming a dpr of n cross n that is n square okay i got the code ready here let me try running this so this accept solution for two cases let me try summoning this so this is accept solution for all the test cases we have so congrats guys you just learned three approaches brute force experimental centers and dynamic programming and also wrap and solving palindrome substrings using three different approaches if you found this breakdown useful drop a comment below and share your thoughts don't forget to like the video spread the word to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials also do follow on instagram for latest updates see you in the next one